Hi, welcome back to Reading with Money. I'm Money, and today I am playing my TBR game for February. If you're new here, this is my TBR game that I made based on Friends TV show. Um, I'll link the playlist up above so you can watch that first video where I go over all the rules. But basically, um, each square represents either a genre or a card, which has like more specific prompts. But that's basically it. There are no rewards or punishments. Um, it's all very laid back and chill because I am mostly a mood reader. So this is just to give me options and help me decide. Now, last month, well, I did not play my TBR game for January because uh, <laughs> my reading plans involved reading Ulysses. It was like the big book that I was gonna tackle. Uh, it's not going well. <laughs> I haven't been reading much this month. Um, it's like my trip to New York kind of like derailed me, like in my habit of like reading every day and I had so many things to catch up on once I came back. The only book I have finished is Hellbent, um, the second in the Ninth House Alex Stern uh, series, which came out um, on like the 10th and I devoured in two days because I had to. I had to. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Ulysses is gonna have to take like a step back. I might just, you know, pick it up every once in a while this year. I don't know. I couldn't really... I mean, it is very hard to read, um, but it's like, I don't I don't feel like picking it up. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like in a reading slump, I guess. Um, but anyway, I am excited about um, February's TBR. So let's just get into it because yeah, we have quite a few books to get through. Okay, we are ready for a new round. So I'll just shuffle up the cards a bit. I think that's fine. And we're gonna start over because we didn't play one month and I don't wanna go back and check where I was. So here we go, starting point, And let's start with one number one. That's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's Joey. Do you want to put the book in the freezer? So, um, round number one got me the fridge, which is thriller, horror, mystery, that kind of thing. For that, I am going with All Swell by Mona Awad. Um, I finally got a physical copy of this in New York and uh, I'm very excited to read this. I read Bunny last year and absolutely loved it. And this involves Shakespeare, so yeah, of course, count me in. Uh, so this is about a um, teacher who wants to put on all's well um, with her university class or something, but her students want to put on Macbeth, I think it is. Um, and then weird things happen. Uh, I'm not really sure what goes on, but if it's anything like Bunny, yeah, that's all I need to know. Uh, so yeah, that's book number one. Okay, roll number two. Two. One, two. <laughs> that is Cyber Jane Eyre. Their book is light years ahead of its time. Okay, so row number two, Cyborg Jane Eyre there is sci-fi, of course. Um, and for that, I am going with Imago, 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 Imago. I don't know how to say this title. <laughs> I don't know how to say this book's title and I should have looked it up by now, but I still haven't. So uh, this is by Octavia e. Butler. It's the third in the Lilith Spruth Xenogenesis uh, series. It's aliens basically um, coming to earth to save what's left of humanity and getting involved with them. That's all I can really say. Um, because yes, this is the third book, so I don't, I can't, spoilers. But anyway, we are buddy reading that with Kim from Expedition Through Pages and someone else, I can't remember their name. We still need to arrange the details and everything, but it's getting done finally, because I started this series like in, what, June? <laughs> So yes, it's time. It's finally time to finish it. And I'm excited to buddy read it because I think it's going to be uh, brilliant to discuss that book because that series just... Wow. Anyway, uh, moving on. All right, roll number three. Two. One, two. <laughs> I found the picture. Okay, so roll number three. That is historical fiction. That's one of my favorite friends references, by the way. Um, anyway, for that, I am reading Christodora by Tim Murphy. Yes, um, this is a book that my best friend read last year and absolutely loved. And uh, she bought it when we were in New York and I brought it back with me because she had to go back to Canada. Um, so yes, and I had to read it anyway because she told me I had to, so yes. 
it came back with me in my very very heavy suitcase <laughs> but anyway um this is historical fiction set in the 1980s i think during the whole aids um epidemic thing in new york uh christodora is a building um we actually saw it it was incredible for my friend because she had just read this book and we were like there <laughs> um so yes um it's set in this building um it's right in front of um Tompkins square park anyway it was magical to be there and i haven't even read the book so apparently it goes from like the 1980s to the our current uh timeline i'm not really sure what else happens in this book and uh, what I haven't re even really read the back of it. Um, that's all I know. I know it counts as historical fiction and I'm excited to read it and discuss it with my friends. So that's next. Roll number four is a four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> a lonely gray couch. Oh, look, cried Ned. The kingdom was his forever. Um... Okay, roll number four. That is contemporary. That's I think that that's my favorite friends reference though. Um, anyway, uh, for this, it was kind of hard to choose because um, I don't know if you can sense a theme going on here, but I do want to read all the books I got from New York <laughs> as soon as possible before I lose interest in them. And another one that I got was Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Now, I know that this is, has like a mixture of genres, like I'm pretty sure there's science fiction and fantasy and historical fiction even i think because it's a bunch of stories that are interconnected that's all i know but goodreads does classify it as contemporary also so i'm going with it i'm reading this book as well um i do love a book that has interconnected stories i always think that's fascinating and trying to find the connections so i'm excited to read this as well and then watch the movie there's a movie about this right there's a movie based on this right anyway Right, roll number five. We're getting all genres today. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh, that's a card. Okay, let's see what it is. And my sister, family member picks. Ooh, I do know what she's gonna pick. All right, roll number five, the card. Where did I put the card? Here. And my sister. I keep doing this. I don't know if you can actually see it. Does it focus? Yeah, there you go. So that's uh, family member picks. I always ask my sister because, yeah. So um, this time she chose for me to read Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Now, this is not a genre that I usually read uh, anymore. I used to read romance sometimes. I don't know. Um, I think that fan fiction kind of like took over then at some point and now reading romance is just why? <laughs> I don't know. I still read fan fiction though. I have heard good things about book lovers. I'm not entirely sure if is this is the one where there's like um like they're both into books. Are they both writers or are they both in the publishing industry? I'm not sure which one it is of the Emily Henry book. <laughs> Hi, it's editing me here. You can disregard everything I just said. Well, not everything, because I was right about book lovers being the one about um, the the two people in the publishing industry. But yeah, my sister did not mean to say book lovers. She meant beach read, because <laughs> yeah, she apparently enjoyed this one way more than uh, book lovers. So yes so beach read is the one where there are two writers and one of them only writes romance and one of them only writes like literary fiction i guess and so they are both like having a writer's block and they decide to like swap genres i guess and yeah they're obviously gonna fall in love during the course of it back to past me i know my sister liked it so uh, again, excited to read it and discuss it with her. I did think she was gonna choose Verity because she read Verity last year and uh, couldn't even give it a rating. So I might have to put that on my list as well um, and read Verity and see what I think. Anyway, next roll. All right, and what could possibly be the last roll, roll number six. It is not. <laughs> okay, we were getting quite a variety of genres there for a while, but then it had to happen, the odds. So I landed on another uh, fridge square. So another mystery, thriller, horror thing, and I am putting the appeal back on this list because I have to read this book. Why haven't I read this book yet? Um, I think February will be a good time to read it. Uh, I'm still 
sort of on holiday like i'm not teaching in february yet um i do go back to work to like start planning and things so technically i do have um more time i'm finally reading this if you don't know this is a mystery set in like a small town in england i think and it's told through mixed media like emails messages evidence things like that and i think that you don't know a lot about the case and you're just piecing it together as you go along um I don't know that's all i know about it i am excited to read this i should just get on with it right with that and let's do one more roll then roll number seven i don't know if you can see that but that's a three. Oh no <laughs> one two three we're gonna have i'm gonna have to add another roll again <laughs> but anyway i got uh more historical fiction and for that i am choosing crossings by alex land dragon 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 who knows I am very bad at this. Uh, I had heard of this book, I don't even know how at this point, I don't remember, but it's been on my Goodreads TBR like for a while, like on my Goodreads one to read. And what interested me about this book is that it's a book that um, you can read the normal way, but there's also like an alternative reading order. So it tells you at the beginning that um, there's, a, there's a different pagination order sequence thing. Um, so yes, I have to decide how I'm going to read it. I am probably going to read it in that order that is mentioned there because it's it's a novel thing. It's apparently about this bookbinder who has to bind this um, manuscript, uh, but the client was murdered and it's like three stories again. The first story is a ghost story penned by notorious 19th century French poet Charles Baudelaire for an illiterate girl interesting the second is a noir roman set in paris on the eve of nazi occupation that's the historical fiction i assume purporting to be the work of exiled german jewish philosopher walter benjamin the third is a fantastical memoir of a woman claiming to inhabit many bodies across multiple lifetimes as she searches for her lost love i don't know it sounds fascinating and um yeah i'm very much looking forward to reading this okay roll number eight six again one two three four five Okay, then I landed on the Central Park Square, which is a starting square, but it's the one I had said that if I landed exactly on that square, I could have a book haul. But I literally just had one, <laughs> so we're not we're not counting that. Um, I am keeping it for you know at some point in the year. I there is a book that's coming out in February that I really want to read. It's um, Katie's book from Books and Things. Uh, Katie Lumsden. I think that's how you say her name. Um, she's coming out with a book, uh, historical fiction, gothic sort of thing, and I am very excited to read it. So I might count the book haul for that, but I shouldn't really be spending any more money. Uh, but I think I can afford one, one little book. Um, but yeah, that comes out, I think, by the end of February. So I'll probably get to it in March. We shall see. All right, next roll. Okay, roll number nine. I don't even know. One, two, three, four. Okay, an eagle flew in, landed on the stove. Okay. Okay, the last roll is fantasy, another different genre. So I think I have quite a variety here and I'm giving myself options here. I could either read The Atlas Paradox, which I have been putting on the TBR for, um, you know, for months now, and I still haven't read. Uh, this is the second one in the Atlas Six series. It's about uh, the Library of Alexandria, and their protectors who have magic and uh, there's a competition to enter this Alexander society there are six of them but only five of them will make it in it's quite interesting and quite divisive uh, from their later reviews I've read um, but I am intrigued enough to read the second book I just haven't got to it yet um, so that's one option the other one is another one that I got in New York and that is a history of wild places which technically is more like magical realism if I remember correctly and also like thriller horror ish I think it's about missing people I think uh what does it say I can't remember again this is one of the other books that I had on my to be read list and uh, I saw it in a bookstore and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get it. Travis Wren has an unusual talent for locating missing people. Often hired by families as a last resort, he takes on the case of Maggie St. James, a well-known author of macabre children's books, okay, interesting, and is soon led to a place many believed to be only a legend. Called Pastoral, this reclusive community was founded in the 1970s by like-minded people searching for a simpler way of life. 
By all accounts, pastoral shouldn't exist anymore, and soon after Travis stumbles upon it, he disappears, just like Maggie St. James. Years later, Theo, a lifelong, mem lifelong member of Pastoral, discovers Travis's abandoned truck beyond the border of the community. No one is allowed in or out, not when there's a risk of bringing a disease, the rot, into Pastoral. Unraveling the mystery of what happened reveals secrets that Theo, his wife Kala, and her sister B keep from one another. Secrets that prove their perfect, isolated world isn't as safe as they believed, and that darkness takes many forms. Huh. I had forgotten about the the plot of this <laughs> it reminds me of like um what's that m night Shyamalan movie um what's it called um it sounds very interesting i don't know where the magical realism thing comes in but i am intrigued because that's what goodreads classifies it as so um but again it also has the thriller horror thing going on i think those are the eight books on my tbr for february last february i did read eight books so we shall see how it goes let's see if i can actually get out of this slump the book i am planning to read this last week of january is actually <laughs> the fifth in the akotar series um because i need to get it over with um so yeah we'll see if i can get started with that as soon as possible so i can start with all these other books Anyway, um, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have read any of these books um, and what you're excited to read in February. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, happy reading!